Alright, we're going to do a little experiment here. I don't know if this is going to work or not. First thing I need is my safety glasses. Second thing I need is some earphones because this is going to be loud and ring. Now, what I got, I got a kink in this. Translate to this side right here and this side right here. This is from the very front of the trailer. And uh, this is not the one I want to do first. That's one. Once I figure out how to do it, I'll come back to that one. All right. This is the tractor, the tri <laughs> the one that has a bow in it. Can you see the bow? Right here. So, seeing as how this is being thrown away, I saw online a gentleman straightening these things. And I want to see if I could do it too. Now, the way they said to do it was get the hump in between it. and try some more. I don't know if it's working or not. You know what I think? I think I'm going to spread the anvils apart. There's a little twist in it. Because it's rough. Now, I'm getting a little bit of a waver in here. And I don't know how much of that I've taken out. Perhaps I should do what everybody rationally thinks would think. And uh measure it a couple of times before I keep continuing, right? It might be a lost cause. It seems fairly even over top of this range. seem to be taking quite a bit of it out. And I guess I'm going to have to fiddle with the amount of pressure to put on it. Anyhow, that's that one, right? So I'll hold it up to a straight edge. I'm going to grab a straight edge. Oh. i got this beam here, which is, of course, bigger. Than the one. It's going up. All right. Can you see that? It's slowly working its way out. Where with the height of it? It seems that it moved to right here. against our straight edge again. Alright, let me go get a tape measure. I'll be right back. I should have measured it to start with, right? Alright. Got myself a tape measure here. So, effectively, best way for y'all to see what's going on here would be to hold this. Oh, come on. Right here. You see as it is right now, I'm touching on the two ends. I have quite a
a bit of a gap in the middle. Now, this gap was inch and three quarter on the first time I measured it. But that was while it was on the trailer. And now it is just under a half inch in the trailer. You know, this is the nicer end of the anvil. Oh, and I turn it around. All right, are we still in view? Now, I'm thinking the further I have these things spaced apart, uh, more likely uh, I am to fix the bin. This is still straight up and down this line. I'm getting a little wave right there on it. I'm going to hammer it back down. But, and this is vitally important. Alright, here's my two rails. Hey, look! That not the rail we were supposed to be measuring yet. Alright. So, what I can see right now is a weld bead right here and a weld bead right here that are going to hinder me actually measuring any of this. So, let me clamp this down. I'll take the weld beads off. I'll be right back. All right, so now I'm back. I ground off the welds. See, there was a bunch of uh, the wire decking was welded across here. And as I was holding it up against the rail right here, um, I was getting inaccurate results. But what once was an inch and three quarters is now, at the worst, uh, Three sixteenths. All right. That being said, look like the worst. changed. It's seeing a little bit over 3 sixteenths right here where this rust is. There you go. I still got a hump right here. There you go. That's, that's an eighth. I'm going to put a tape measure on it and do it like this now. No. Still just under 3 sixteenths. Let's see where the worst spot is. Now you see, as I was doing it, these things have moved together. Let's move them back apart.
All right. Let's see how bad it is. All right. Looking down the length of it, I can't get the tape out with one glove. All right. Now that's an eight. One sixteenth at a time, right? All right. So on that right there, I'm gonna say. down that. That was an inch and three-quarter bend. All right, and now it's like a sixteenth and a half right here. So I'm going to go out here wide. See down that? You see that little gap? It's barely touching on the ends down there. And it's just over a sixteenth. So it's like three sixty fourths. No, one four sixty fourths is a sixteenth. Maybe it's five sixty fourths. All right. So that's all I can do for that. Now I wore the glasses because I didn't know if it would chip off. And that's one way to straighten. Piece of angle iron. If you look down it, right there, to what it was. All right. That one, right? What's the next? One? Well, this is the next. One. And this is bent in two directions. This was the front beam. So you see how bad it's bent here. That means we would have to, oh, I don't know. I'm going to say you need to go down right here. as you beat one side down it will pull the other side up where it needs to be at all right so three sixteenths here is bending out on me hopefully a good way to do that I guess would be to take the two ends of the ambles here like this. But I'm going to have to reposition myself. Oh, all it takes is one little steel chip to fly off. Blind you for life. I've been to the doctor four times now, I think, to get steel taken out of my eye. And I don't really want to do it again. All right, so... Seem pretty straight down this line now. But this line here is still got a bow in it. And it's right here. While it's straight down this line, straight down this line, you put it this way, this line of it, and this line here both curve that way. So I mean beating on it on this side, right? But 
what I think I need to do is hang it off the edge of the anvil here for some of it. This way, still curving that way. All right, and it seems I was doing better with it, with these further apart. Now this anvil apparently is not quite as heavy enough because it keeps dancing. I wish I had some way to knock them all down, but I don't. When I had before, I got the glove out. The glove gave me a lift. line that's cupped. And this line is cupped right here. Whereas this side seems to be cupped here. So there's a twist in it from right here to here. And that's what angle line does. It twists. So I can't see from my glasses. Alright, I'm going to stick this on here, I'm going to right there. Alright. That still looks great. That looks a little bowed like right here. That looks a little bowed like right there. where the bow was. Alright. While I didn't get it all, I did get some of it. My glasses have fogged up on me. And I guess that means it's break time. Alright, so I guess what I meant to start off with on this video is holding this up to a true straight edge. And as you can see, it's still got a bow right down there, somewhere in here. And it starts right here at the edge of this. And if I flip it over, this side is actually fairly straight. Although it does this number down the length of it. See, there's the top rail. Both of them are two inch. And let me do it for you down there. All right, so you see the difference between the two rails, the height of the two rails. That's with it perfectly straight to where the bend is. And at that end of it, I'm gonna call that uh, three quarters of an inch. Now this three sixteenths is a whole lot harder to move. So I have a four pound sledgehammer. Now this might be a three pound. I wonder what I can get that's bigger. Um, well, probably a five or a six or a ten pound or fifteen pound sledgehammer would probably be better. All right. But I gotta take that curve out right there. I was hoping to at least. Anyway, all right, break time. It only seems like a couple minutes, but man, I'm sweating. All right, it's been about seven minutes. That's enough of a break. The uh, glasses are still a little foggy. I uh, went for some other hammer options. Now, on the video where the gentleman was doing this, he literally had all his stuff placed this far apart. He had railroad anvils and literally as close as he could get them to each other and then strike down upon them. Let's see where if y'all 
y'all see me in there? Let me move, tilt you back a little. All right. I'm going to put the camera thing down. I can't see what you're doing now. So. I had theirs. And. All right. So I'm saying the bin. And right here. Right at the end of this weld. And on this one. I'm going to say it's right here. <laughs> Check it out. It bent on this side of the weld here and this side of the weld here. And this is where they had previously weld, welded the metal. And it twisted, so there's a twist right in here. All right? Because it it, can't, it didn't go straight. It, it had to go from here and come over here and then over across, right? See, this way, all right. Going down this line this way. It, it seems straight this way. Down the corner. This side seems high. Here, which is probably the twist I'm seeing. Now, I had two choices. This is a three or four pound hammer. And this is a, I don't know how much this weighs. Small. And this is a 10 pound sledgehammer. see which one I can get in here. Alright, so I want the whole thing. I see the bin. I'm going to put one side of the weld here, which is one side of the bin, and the other side of the bin here. And they're both bridging in between. quite a bit of it out of it. Alright, now it, it seems to have a... Uh-oh. Let's move it on down a little more. A little pucker forming in the top. It's like puckering out. This part is flipping out this way. But this part, right here, Seems to have straightened up quite a bit. Let's hold this thing up against our uh, original measuring tool and see what we got now. All right, so right here, which is where the bend was, I'm within, oh, I should have done that to start with, right? I'm gonna do one inch, measure from the edge of one inch. And it's at the thickness of the metal, Three sixteenths, and it's one eighth out right there on that edge. Let's go down this edge, and you can still see the bow down there at that end. It's bowed down that way. So that means I still need to uh, bend it some more. see the bow, it took some of it out. Where's the bend at, actually? I don't know. I'm going to say the end of the bend is right here. Now i got to watch it. Baby on us. All right. Eh. Took a little out. The other side. Now you see what I've done. I've increased the gap here. So I might be messing up. All right. I uh. As I told y'all before, my air conditioner went out last week, two weeks ago now on a Friday. It's Thursday now. And uh. I couldn't get a day off to work on my air conditioner. 
until the next Wednesday, and I called a repair guy, and he charged me $105 to look at it, then told me it would be $1,680 to replace a motor. Well, I had looked at the motor, and I couldn't find the name tag. When he told me $1,680, I uh, determined to look closer for that name tag on the motor. And uh, I found it, and uh, oh, I'm going to have to do that story later. Well, oddly enough, I uh, went inside to use the restroom and found out the queen has died. Mm -hmm. That's unfortunate. God save the queen, right? Anyway, where were we? I had my headset somewhere around here, and apparently I ran off into the house with it, because I had to go. <laughs> my headphones. I'm sure y'all found them long before I did. They're all right here. Right there. Right where we were working. How convenient. In case I should happen to get up and walk away. So, anyhow. The, uh... I don't have much more to say about the queen. All right. This time... I think I overshot the angle, folks. I think I overshot it. Alright. It was bowed up this way. And we were hammering down on this side, trying to get it to go down, right? Alright, so what we got here? It seems to be angling that way. So that means it still has a bow this way. But, this way, this way, it angles out that way, right? So why don't we flip it over? And we try the hammer method from on top again. And it seems that it's right about there. It's still crooked. It's gonna go right, that side. This side is actually somewhat decent, right? There's a little gap right here, but it's nothing special. Um, but it still has a little bit of a where is it? Bow right here down this one. And so I need to try to Uh-huh. And see, now it's way down there at the end. All right. So hammering it on it that way, bent this side back out. But it brought this side way in, if you can see that. gap right in here. I think we need to hit. Right. I'm going to hold this up against this straight edge. Oop. Guess I won't. Alright. It's about an eighth inch out. And this flat against here. It's about an eighth inch. Holding it here. As you can see, what was about three quarters of an inch down there at the end is now not even a quarter. And I think from looking down the end of it that I actually have a bow down here. That put part of the pump back in it. That 
put part of the hump back in it. All right, let's put it here. All right. See, it did. It pulled some of that hump back into it. Let's do it here. All right. So this is about an eighth inch. And I is level. It actually comes up um, oh, about a quarter inch. So that means this is about a quarter inch. So that means right in here. Where I was looking for it. And I'll be darned, I messed a weld on this. I need to ground that. I need to ground that one. Okay. This one, this one. I missed a bunch of them. I don't even know what that is. It could just be the paint putting me off. I don't know. All right, let me take a minute, and I'm going to grind these things. As you can see, fairly straight there. And just under a quarter right there. And that was the side with the grinding. No, that was the side without grinding. It's like that. Saying, maybe I ought to try chasing it down right here. Ow. Alright, that's the easy out. I think that's as good as I'm going to get this thing. Let me chase these wheels off. And I'll be right back. All right. So let's see where my finger is. See my finger right there? That's about a quarter inch gap, right? And I don't think I'm going to get this any better than it is. Um. less than a quarter. This is 3 sixteenths, by the way. And uh, we come around here, flip it over on this side, and uh, it's a sixteenth, if that, right here on this gap. So I'm going to say this one is done as we're going to get. The next one, which I think was this one, this is the other one we did, and it still looks like a bow right there. So here's what I'm going to do. Put the big hammer to it. I didn't grind the weld off good enough on that. So the weld is actually what's making the gap that's in here. All right. And this side right here, you can't get it to have, sit no tighter. So that's two of them that are done. Now, the third one, um, I'm going to practice. See, this is the rail I'd like to keep. There's a twist in it right here and right here. And if you look down the edge of it, if you look down, it's got a kink in it. All right, so literally, if you put the bend on the uh, rail, it kinks over that bad. If you put it here, you can see that it raises up. It's flat and straight right here, and it kicks up. I'm going to say almost an inch. And then if you turn it down this way. You see that? All right. So, uh, 
Hi. Right. My measuring rail needs to move. That may not be heavy enough, but it's still about 80 pounds. <laughs> it's 16 inches of, I don't know, 8 or 9 inch railroad track. Alright, so what they were saying, take this. Here's the flat, and here's where it's bent. And hammer it down off right off the edge of the anvil All right now you see all right so that did a wonderful job right there all right and come back in here I'm gonna take that little bubble it bubbled a little on me I'm going to put that out. I'm going to come right here and hammer it one more time because I still had a kink going in. And, uh, all right. All right. So that was the pre preliminary work. I was going to do the other one first and see. But you notice how much it got closed up? You see that? All right. So apparently it still bows down that way. And oh yeah, it still kinks way off down there. All right. So where we got? I would have to put this on the anvil over here. Looking down it. All right. Looking down right there. There you go. See that? Now it's about an eighth of an inch. And that side's about a quarter. Let me see where I can hit it. Make that go out. Alright. Right here. So it looks like I do more good. If I hit it on this side. I see, I see two welds on here. You need to go right now. All right, so looking down the top rail, looking straight down this line right here. It seems pretty straight. I'm going to lift this thing up here on this beam. Now it gets down here where this curve is, and it gets a little wonky. Let's hold right here. Still about a quarter inch right there. And now you see, my welds are going to hold me off on it. So let me take a minute and grind those welds off. Hi, hi, hi. Yeah, I'm running out of camera space again. So I got to upload all my stuff. Here's up. I thought this was neat. Let's see if I have something to uh, pick this up with. Here's the weld bead from the top rail. Do you think that actually welded in? You think they got a good connection there on that? I've noticed that on a bunch of the welds of theirs that I've been pulling out, that when I grind them down to a certain point, they just flip and roll off. 
and they welded over paint. Now, if you had noticed, I probably haven't because I haven't showed it a whole lot. I just thought y'all would like that. I think that was kind of neat. It, it's very hot. I mean, that's why I love that. Touching it. But anyhow, um, yeah. So, yeah. Another reason. Just another reason. Now that was the end of the rail that was sitting these welded too. See that one? Alright, I'm gonna call that smooth. Alright. Let me come here and hold you up. Zoom out. Zoom out. Alright. What we got here? This is their weld when you're all done, and that's as level as you can get it. If you see the line, let me use my pointer. All right, maybe that'll help. If you see this line right here at the end of my, that's where the uh, upright of what it was welded to was. And you notice that the weld going across here peeled off. So that means that didn't, it was good on the end. It was good right here, but the section from here to here just completely peeled off um, we got a lot of undercut here undercut here and here and here a little bit right there but that's not bad that's unacceptable 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 for eighth inch material you're looking over half the depth of the uh, material and then to not literally not even have the weld bead touching the uh, connected I don't even get how they undercut it, but it wasn't even connected here. So anyhow, all right, so sliding this across, I no longer feel any bumps. And, uh, well, that's it. I'm about about to get rained on. I got to put the uh, equipment inside of the uh, building over here, mainly that one.